What, what just happened in there? <laughs> I just won my first professional fight in Invicta. That's what just happened. And I think I did it in a pretty dominating fashion. So I'm like, I'm super pumped. I trained really hard for this fight. And I knew Tiffany was going to be a really, really good fighter. And she's a really, really hard hitter. And I didn't have to watch very much of her fighting to know that. But um, I found out when she did get cheated. I'm going to ramble. I will ramble. Next question. Next question. Um, I mean, you obviously, you, you had to know there was a lot of hype behind Tiffany. Yeah. Well, um, I knew there was a there was a pretty big hype train going behind Tiffany, but you know nobody really takes trains anymore. It's all about flying, and I think I gave Tiffany a nice little ride on Holiday Airlines. So, um, yeah, you know it's just uh, it's not really about what you do or what you have done in fighting. It's not about what you have done in fighting. Um, it's what you do in the present. So, it's important to understand how good your opponent is and, and what they've achieved and I don't want to take anything away from Tiffany because she's a great person she's a great fighter um, but fighting is in the in the moment MMA is in the moment it's about variables variables and it's about putting your opponent where she is the least comfortable and that's ultimately what wins fights and that's what I've been doing for the last seven fights and it's worked this time so I'm gonna keep doing that uh, can you just tell me a little bit what, what is your uh, martial arts background um, I, my martial arts background is strictly MMA. I started training to fight MMA. I had, I had done a couple years in the Marine Corps, um, and that's not really the same kind of fighting. So um, at the time when I started training, I was actually overweight. I was a smoker. I was a drinker. And I just decided I didn't have, there's nothing really going on in my life that I was really proud of. So I wanted to put my mind to something. And I took it in and I ran with it. And ever since then, I've, I've, it's, it's bled into all the other the areas of my life. Um, I'm a, I go back to school on Monday. Um, I go to SOU, Southern Oregon University. I'm graduating this spring with a health and physical education degree. Um, uh, and there's a lot of other things that I'm doing in my life that that is because of MMA, because I started training MMA, so. Um, the game plan, was that the game plan? Yeah, basically, you know, um, at first I almost kind of wanted to stand and bang with her a little bit just to see if my striking was up to par, but um, I just went right to my instincts, which is to clinch up, uh, put my opponent on the cage. I usually actually have a harder time in past fights getting uh, my opponent to the ground. I don't know how many takedowns I got, but I think it was like three, three maybe four. But um, so basically, my instinct and my game plan is to kind of bang it out. If, if I can get the upper hand, then I'll stay, stay standing. But um, I pretty much knew with Tiffany, it wasn't really, really guesswork that she was probably going to be a better striker than me. And um, once I got in there, I was like, you know what, screw it. We're just going to do the cage thing because that's where I'm comfortable. And I know she has no idea. She had no idea what, what real pressure on the cage was. So I took her to the cage, took her down. Um, I wanted to do a little more a little bit more ground and pound than I, I think I got to. I, I know I landed some pretty he heavy shots, but um, she was really wiry. She was ready to get back up. And um, I also had a feeling that she's going to give her neck up because that's something that you just, you have to kind of learn how to do in MMA is to stay protected at all times. And, and being a Muay Thai champion, I knew that uh, that's not the first thing that she thinks of when she goes to the ground because usually a ref is standing, them, standing her back up. So. Um, yeah, I just wanted to capitalize on everything that she was um, weak in, and I went in there and I did that. And I also got the suplex, which was so exciting because I was telling everybody, if I just get one suplex, because um, <laughs> I call it the Holiday Airlines, and it's an offshoot from GP Airlines. Um, it's one of my coach's coaches. and um, So that's really awesome <laughs> that I got that. Um, you pretty much dominated every second of the fight, except for about 10 seconds. Looks like you got you got you got hit yes, with a hard one. Yes, uh, I did. About maybe about 30 seconds left in the uh, first round. Yeah. Um, tell me, tell me, walk into that moment. Um, I don't even know what she hit me with, to be honest. I remember I got her, got her to the ground. Um, I almost had the rear naked, and then we got back up, and I let her reset. And that's a big no-no, especially with the striker. She starts getting comfortable moving around in the cage. Then I'm, I have to start backing up, and then I can't push forward, and then the cage work goes out the window. So. Um, I let her reset, and she popped a pretty serious shot off. And again, it went right to my instincts in MMA. It's a lot different. There's a lot of other things you could take control of, even when you're out of control at the moment. So 
Um, she popped me right in the face, and I kind of had a little flashbang, and then I shot right for the double, and I finished the double. Um, and she almost got an arm bar. She, she went and sunk it in, yeah, but... Yeah, how, how deep was that arm bar? Um, I knew. I had, heard the, I had heard that the round was over, so I don't think it was anywhere close. Um, I had just starting to, had started to defend when it was was kind of getting a little bit uncomfortable. But at that point, I think, even if there wasn't just a couple seconds left on the, on the clock, that I would have been able to get out of it pretty easily. So, but it was pretty, it was pretty cool to see her shoot for a submission. Um, that's just something I wasn't really expecting from her. Um, I guess what we've heard is like, Tiffany has a lot of difficulty getting an opponent. Can you, can you walk us through the story of how you got this fight? Oh, um, I had been trying to get into Invicta for a couple months. Um, with no professional fights, it, I knew it was a long shot. Um, I have a pretty clean amateur resume and being an all-American wrestler, um, I figured um, I could maybe just kind of give it a shot, get in there, and there was people trying to work, work in, and it just wasn't working out because the card kept changing and the location, this card, um, I think it was supposed to be in Costa Mesa and then with the Anaheim and then now it's, you know, out in Missouri. So um, I kind of had a, kind of a crapshoot of a time getting on the card. And then um, I had a random Rosa Fritas, I think is her name. She, I guess people were looking for an opponent for Tiffany. And, and I was trying to talk, uh, I had been talking about wanting to fight September 23rd. And um, she had hit me up. She's like, you know, I might have, a, there might be an opportunity for you. And, for Invicta of all things, and I was like, what? Like, I don't care who it is. Like, you know, she sent me the name Tiffany Van so I'm like, I don't even know who that is. Like, whatever. And I tell my coach, I'm like, her name's like Tiffany Van Zand or Van So, and he's like, what? You know, Tiffany Van Seuss, like, do you have any idea who that is? And I'm like, no. And he's like, she's a kickboxing champion, you know? She's trained with, we actually have a lot of mutual friends. So, um, and a couple people that we told, there, it was, it was kind of 50-50. Uh, they're like, Cal, I don't think you should take that fight. You know, I think Tiffany's going to whoop your ass. And then there's other people that are like, you know, I don't think she's going to be able to deal through wrestling. So ultimately, I didn't have any doubt in my mind that I was going to be able to come out and perform and put the fight where I want it to go. So um, to me, like, it, it really doesn't matter who you put in front of me. And I feel like all MMA fighters should be like that. You shouldn't you shouldn't have to have one specific opponent because that's who you think you're going to be. You want to go out there and showcase your skill set. So um, I went and did that. <laughs> that's, you know, I'm really thankful for that. I'm thankful for Invicta for having me as one of their fighters, and I'm thankful for Tiffany and, uh, and obviously my coach and my coaches, my gym, Southern Oregon MMA, um, Rogue Combat Academy is Southern Oregon MMA. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, this is great, you know, like I don't even know, like I'm just in ecstasy right now. I want to go, go out and have a good time and celebrate and hopefully get right back into a camp. <laughs>